Live from News Channel 8, this is After the Game with Darrell Young. Good evening. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I'm Alex Parker. It's his show, Darrell Young. D.Y., how are you? I'm all right. A little tired. What time did you get home? 2.30 this morning. 2.30? Yeah. Uh, can you, do you, does everybody sleep on the way home or what? Um, Five hour flight? You know, we did, we did sleep a little bit at the end towards the end of the flight, but at first we were just asking each other, you know, what we thought of the game, what could we change, what could happen? Uh, you know, tended to Adam Hayward, a guy who, you know, might be out for the season, I think he is, I'm not sure. Um, I'll get a chance to talk to him later on once I leave here, but, um, you know, just, just kind of mingle with the guys to try to figure out where we're trying to go with this thing. This is on the plane back. You guys yeah. are sort of chatting about what just happened. Yeah, yeah. What was the consensus on what happened? Uh, we just we just need to play together and learn how to win. That was that was the you know final verdict that we came up with. Yeah, everyone just has to understand how to win. We had the game. Office and line, we did a great job. I mean, we did some good things come out of the game. We gave up some plays, but they gave up some plays too. They just made you know the play that they needed at the end of the game to win. Uh, it's weird to me. Uh, a month ago, you guys go to Dallas. On the road, good football team, play your best game, win the game. Uh, even in Minnesota, played pretty well, albeit in a loss. Yesterday, you guys played, for the most part, a, a, a pretty good football game. Uh, why is it maybe either on the road or the level of the opponent that you guys seem to play up to? If What I'm getting at. Well, if you guys played the way you played yesterday against Tampa, FedEx, you're, you're not losing that football game, I don't think. Um, I agree. I, I don't know why that is. I mean, uh, you know, you looked at, you know, the team, like you said, you looked at the Tampa Bay team in terms of record, you look at San Fran, and everyone would have counted us out from the jump getting blown out by probably 30 points, you know. But, uh, you know, San Francisco, you know, it's, it's the NFL. The game's played on the field. You can't worry about, you know, what, uh, you know, what people are thinking, what people are saying, what scores people have written down. Uh, you know, Anquan had a really good game. You know, Alfred had a really good game, you know, and uh, they just did some things better than us at the end of the day to kind of put themselves ahead of us. 703-387-1020 is our lawn and leisure hotline. If you want to talk with DY about the game, give us a call. We will get to your calls momentarily. 703-387-1020. Uh, DY, the build-up to this game had a lot to do with the quarterback and the head coach. Uh, what did you make of RG3's performance yesterday? <laughs> I thought Robert gave us a chance to win. We were in the game the whole game. He did what he had to do. Um, you know, like I said, I'm, I can never sit here and criticize him because I missed a block early. I ran him to him, made him fumble one play. Who knows where that drive goes, you know? So um, I, I loved what he did for this team. He, get, he put us in a situation to win, and, uh, you know, we just came up short and did some other things, you know, and it sucks when you have to go 99 or 95 yards, whatever it is at the end of the game. And, you know, I would have liked for it to go, you know, to happen, but, you know, uh, it's, it's football. Those guys get paid, too, for what they do. They're really good, and, you know, they, they came up with a big sack, and they beat us. Uh, is it your sense that all of this drama could be, and I don't know how it couldn't be, from losses, weighing, <laughs> weighing on Robert? It can be. I mean, he um, he's one of those guys who, you know, just like me, I'm a competitor, but, you know, when people are kind of, you know, criticizing you and your back's against the wall and, you know, you do some things and people are kind of jumping on you for everything that you do wrong, uh, you get frustrated, you know, and I seen him on the bus last night and I said, hey, you know, we, we, we love you, we trust you, everything in here, you know, we, we're going to, you know, try to put you in the best situation possible to help you out to, you know, get people off your back. We're going to try to make plays for you and, uh, you know, we just came up short for him. Uh, he seems to me to be sort of a glass half full guy. He's always optimistic. The, the next best thing is always right around the corner. It's going to get fixed. When I saw the video, I was not at the game, but when I watched him on TV walking off the field, for the first time I thought I saw an RG3 that looked sort of defeated. Usually even after a loss, chest is out. He's still confident. Do you sense that he's still as confident and he's been as he's been these first uh, three years of his career? I tell you what, um, it's, it's hard to be confident after, you know, People basically criticizing you for weeks, saying that you're not the quarterback that we thought you were. You know, it's going to be hard to go out there and play. And you know, people, you know, you're going to have, you're going to be down about it. But we get a win this week in Indianapolis. Him versus Andrew Luck. That's that's going to be the headlines this week. Um, you know, he'll be back on track in terms of confidence, I believe. But I don't think he lost confidence. But like you said, we lost some games, so of course your confidence is going to be shot to a certain standpoint. I promise you, we will leave the RG3 topic <laughs> at some point, DY. But real quick, your coach today said the plan for now. He did a conference call. Uh, Jay Gruden did this afternoon, not in front of the cameras, just on the phone, is for Robert to start. But that could change after they look at film and after he talks to quarterbacks and coaches, and that decision will come Wednesday. It wasn't ironclad. Is that a tough thing for a football team? Do, do you want it just to, I know you want it to go away, but you know what I'm getting at. 
Yeah, I mean, that's not a decision to make. You know, my job is to be a player. I can't worry about, you know, what's going on with Robert or the coaches or, you know, any situation other than being a football player. And, uh, you know, like you said, Coach said he'll put the team in the best situation to win at the beginning of the season. And that's the decision that he'll have to make and live with. So whatever he does, I'm going to support him. And, you know, I'm all for whatever movement that he makes. Did you guys meet today or was the day off? Uh, we had the day off, but we did go in the building and to do some things and watch some film and, you know, try to get better. How's Jay holding up? Um, as a first year head coach, I mean, I just know Jay is a happy guy, you know, and uh, he's frustrated. You know, he yells, you know, a lot more than he did early on, obviously because of the situation that we're in. But he's still going to be the same every day. The way he talks to you guys in the media is the way he talks to us in the meeting room. So he's very honest. Um, he tells the truth. And anyone that says that they come to Redskin Park right now and you don't know what your role is, I mean, you're a liar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're going to know what's going on. Uh, our loan and leisure hotline is 703-387-1020. Charles is in Bowie, Maryland tonight. Hi, Charles. What's up? I, I will say this. I give uh, uh, Mr. Young uh, the Optimism Award for representing the, the Redskins. That's a very hard season. But I think from the top down, from the coaches, uh, both offensive and defensive coaches, uh, to the players, they really got to take a hard look to see who stays and who goes. And, you know, unfortunately, I think uh, Robert Griffin's got to be a part of that list of who goes. It, it, you know, the time's up. Uh, Charles and Bowie, thank you for your thoughts. Got five games left, EY. <laughs> and it seems to me there's this sort of dichotomy. Either A, you guys, not the players, the coaches can sort of devise rosters and game plans, et cetera, to try to win the game, or B, to try to look at guys in sort of this five game like a laboratory to see what is best moving forward that must be a tough thing for a football team to sort of know i know there's playing for pride but how do you approach these last five games you look at it like this you say you approach, you approach the season you try to figure out your 53 guys who are for the roster obviously every off season they're going to be there's going to be changes seattle doesn't have the same roster that they had last year san francisco doesn't have the same roster that they had last year every year it changes and you know it's fortunate enough they're in a situation where they have been winning so people don't question them as much and you know we have to find the find foundation and you know, i thought we had it on beating the dallas game if you told me we were you know three and eight at this point i'd call you a liar but we have a chance to go eight and eight on the season i'm not giving up on the season you never know what's going to happen i i don't you know i i'm one of those guys like you said hey I'm optimistic hey that's what that's me I play football I'm on the field that's how I feel every day I'm never going to change my opinion uh, opinion about how I approach the game and I know Sean McVay I know you know coach Groot I know all those guys personally and they're going to coach their butts off to kind of put us uh, try to put us in a situation to be the best offense be the best defense be the best uh, special team junior that we can be 703-387-1020 our lawn and leisure hotline uh Brandon I believe Brandon is in southeast Washington this evening hi Brandon how are you Hey, how you doing, man? I'm, uh, I might be kind of bad because I'm a Cowboys fan, but I just think uh, RG3 time is fine. He doesn't look comfortable back there at all. Uh, it's just not y'all put y'all not playing call, playing play calling around him. Y'all play calling is not fitting him. He needs to be run first, pass second, in my opinion. Okay. I think he'll be the perfect quarterback in San Fran because he's a better passer than Colin Kaepernick. But I'm not a coach. That's okay. just my opinion. Brandon, thank you, Cowboys fan. Uh, DY Brandon is. How does this end with RG3? I don't mean literally two years from now, one year from now, whatever. You've been here every week. We take calls, and the first thing on folks' mind is Robert Griffin III. Do you feel for Rob? I do feel for him because I know him as a person. I respect him, everything that he does, and I respect I uh, respect every, you know the way he approaches the game each and every week. And, um, you know, like I said, it's frustrating, you know. Everyone has, you know, basically – Everyone has a, you know, a coaching point for Robert, you know, but no we're all out. experts. Yeah, but when you got guys, five guys blitzing you up the middle, I mean, I'm a panic too. I panic sometimes in the backfield. I'm just like, you know, I, Justin Smith got pressure. Oh, well, do I go underneath? Do I go outside? I got to make that quick decision. And, you know, sometimes you just get caught, you know, and you live with it. You know, you can't do anything about it. We can't take that game back. I don't care what happens from here. I'm still going to love Robert and I'm going to love him and I'm going to trust him and we're going to put him in a situation like you said, Ken, you know, maybe, maybe we can do some different things for Robert. I don't know. You know, I'm not the coach. I'm just a player and I got to help him out and we tried to help him out with the run game well maybe we need 100 and you know Alfred had 125 maybe we need 128 you know maybe I can get those three yards you know for Alfred you know blocking pushing the pile they tried to get you that touchdown yesterday they tried to they did a good job I, I've never seen it I mean it's the first time I've been stopping in the NFL and it's pretty it's pretty frustrating but
but you know it's a credit to them they did a good job and I'm glad Alfred got in because he got down there and I told him that in the locker room you did all that work you need to get in the end zone you know I appreciate you know you want me to get in the end zone but Alfred's my guy and I love him and I respect everything he does and I appreciate him and you know for him to get down to the one you know I wanted to get in the end zone but when he got in I just told him we came back to the sideline pat him on the helmet and I said man you deserved it I thought you got in on your first one. It was close. It was I thought close. your first one was close. It was close. 703-387-1020. We'll get to your calls uh, after the break. And callers, please take note. By now you know it is big and it is green. All callers to get through on the lawn and leisure hotline will be entered in to win this big green egg. Apparently you can grill with it. You can smoke with it. That's what I'm talking about. Go to WJLA.com slash Big Green Egg for the details, and you can win that puppy. We'll be back after this. Here's your injury report brought to you by the Cochran Law Firm. Tough day yesterday. Start with the big deal. Special teams ace Adam Hayward suffered a tibial plateau fracture on that special teams play. He was just trying to down the punt. He is out for the season. Next is cornerback Tracy Porter. Uh, injury issues all season. Could miss more time with that shoulder uh, joint issue. EJ Biggers left the game with a concussion. He's going through the protocol. He is day to day. A couple other notes. Gruden also mentioned Jordan Reed, Chris Baker, Silas Red. Trent Williams and Greg Ducre, who had that pick, uh, are all day-to-day -day with injuries. That is your injury report brought to you by the Cochran Law Firm, uh, adding injury to insult yesterday. You got the Colts, and you sort of mentioned it in the, in the first segment. And unfortunately for Robert, the storyline is if it wasn't going to be him anyway. It's going to be Robert and Andrew Luck. Um, how do you guys approach this next one? Just approach the game like you do any other week. Uh, you prepare yourself, you know. Um, defense worry about Andrew Luck, and we'll worry about, you know, Robert Mathis and the guys they have on defense. And I don't know, I think LeBron's back over there. I haven't started game playing him, so I know he'll be excited, you know, to play. But uh, we just got to go out there and have fun and, you know, just game plan and approach the week as we do each and every week, but just try to get better and try to win a game. Uh, your defense yesterday kept you in the game. They did. And played very well. And, and despite that first drive where San Fran made it look easy, went right down the field, boom, boom, boom. After that, not much there. Uh, what, what was the difference for your defense yesterday? Down a lot of guys as well. I thought our defense was physical and guys stepped up when they needed to. Uh, a lot of people crest, uh, questioned Brandon Merriweather and some other things, coverage ability and all that stuff. I've heard it all, but he went in and played corner and covered a guy like Crabtree a couple times running a deep out route and he's out there, you know, covering him. Um, but guys stepped up in situations that we needed to and, um, you know, like they were physical. You know, I heard him on the plane, Keenan Robinson, Perry Riley and Merriweather actually have a competition every week to see who hits the fullback harder, who comes downhill the hardest, you know. So, um, you know, I knew at the, <laughs> I watched the fullback get hit a couple times. So I'm like, I'm glad I'm on your team, man. <laughs> So they were doing some good things. Keenan Robinson is a He's baller. special, man. He's special. He makes tackles in the open field. Guys don't get by him. Yeah. He's special. I, you know, I, I told him this before the season started. I hope you, you know, you make the pro well because you're a guy who's, you know, who's torn both pecs, you know, sat out two seasons, played half his first year, sat out the next year, uh, tore the other one in camp. And, you know, now he's back in his third season and actually playing and playing really well. And, you know, actually one of the leaders of that defense now. You've seen him walk out, you know, as a captain. So his story is tremendous, but his effort and his playing ability is, you know, you, you can't replace that. When did you realize he was this good? I hit him in camp a couple of times. Like, this, where have you been, man? <laughs> like, I don't like this right now, but, uh, you know, he's a ball player. Play. That's what it's about. 703-387-1020 uh, is our lawn and leisure hotline. William is in Woodbridge tonight. Hi, William. What's up? Hey, D.Y. I love you, man. I know you're a big supporter of Robert, but I think he should pack his bags. RG3, RG3 needs to put on some weight to play against those big defensive fronts. When I watch the Redskins play, I don't watch to see them win a, a game anymore. I just watch Jackson to see how many yards he, he gets per game or Kerrigan, how many tackles he gets. You know, so that's just what I think. Okay. Thank you, Thank you William. Uh, as you know by now, uh, D.Y., fans, all of us, we can be fickle. And two years ago, he was the hottest thing going, and now he's not so hot. Um, I've asked you this before. Do you at all, as one of the leaders on this team and one of his buddies, do you try to help him through this or do you let him be him? You try to help him through it because you need people to kind of support you and know that they're, they're supporting, you know, and I – 
You know, like for a guy like Robert, like you said, he, he was the hottest thing on the market in 2012, and now everyone's on his back, basically. You see all the Twitter things and you know, everything that's just going on crazy right now with him. And, you know, he needs the people around him to know that we have his back. And like you said, Jay Gruden will put us in a situation with him to let him know that, you know, he's going to support him and then we're going to support him. So I think Robert will be fine. I just think it's growing pains, and we're all going through him right now. It's not just him. Uh, 703-387-1020. Quickly before the break, if we could, Betty is in Charlestown, West Virginia tonight. Hi, Betty. How are you? I'm doing fine. What's up? I just want to let uh, Mr. Young know that I love that team. I watch them every Sunday. And I love Robert Griffin, and I hope everything works out well. They just need to protect him, and maybe these people will get off of his back. But I tell you, I've been watching. I'm 73 years old. I've been watching Redskin. I'm sitting here looking at my Redskin tree that I decorated today. I won't let you down. I'll keep yelling every Sunday. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, love you, team. Love you, too. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. <laughs> CDY, they're out there. They're out there. Betty and Charlestown's <laughs> out there. And there are many more like Betty that, that are so loyal and will stick with you guys no matter what. We need Betty to call back again. <laughs> Betty, if you're still, I would love to see this tree she's talking about. Betty, if you're still uh, listening, I'm on Twitter, at Parker Sports. Hit me up with a picture of your, what I'm presuming <laughs> is some sort of Redskins Christmas tree. I hope so. We'll, we'll put it on television, uh, at Parker Sports. He's Drew Young. I'm Alex Parker. We have to do a break. On the other side, the play of the game yesterday, D.Y. will take that one. Uh, we'll have that and more after this. Don't go away. Here's our play of the game. It comes in the third quarter, and just a couple plays after entering the game, Greg Ducre comes in and makes the play of the game, making an interception against Colin Kaepernick, and that's our Norman DeCarpe care play of the game. Uh, when that happened, I thought, you know what? Everything is going their way. Uh, Jay Gruden even won a challenge yesterday. Yeah. He got that play. Niners kept turning the ball over. I thought the cards, I thought the stars were aligned. It's tough when they're never aligned, D.Y. It's like, if you get the one, you might get a bunch. Yeah. But you got to get the one first. Yeah. Uh, by the way, you may have been on the plane ride home, I'm assuming, when the catch by Odell Beckham Jr. happened. D.Y., we talked during the break. You, you've seen this by now, I'm assuming. I've seen it. I've seen it on the plane. Oh, everyone you saw it on the plane? On, yeah, everyone on Twitter was going crazy. And I was uh, sitting next to Kenny Robinson, and he said it. And I said, no, I mean, everyone says that. But then he showed me. I said, yeah, that was, that was something I've never seen in my life. <laughs> we are very quick to say that this is the best thing we've ever seen. or the, you know, We do this daily. I might do it four times a week. I might see the best play I've ever <laughs> seen in my life and then until the next night. This one, D.Y., yeah. I don't know that I've ever seen a catch better than that. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I've seen Eddie Royal tweet, uh, tweet out something about that he gets the SB already. So um, I don't know. That was, that was a... Pretty tremendous catch. Uh, let's go to Junior in Northeast quickly. We got about a minute left in this segment. Junior in Northeast Washington, what's up? Hey, Junior. What's, going on? what's up, Daryl? How you doing? Man, my problem is office and I ain't giving Robert no protection. I'm a I'm a Redskins fan for life over 45 years. I don't see no office nine protection. And then I got questions for you to ask. What was Brian Ryan Clark thinking about when he made that hit on? Uh, Anquan. On Anquan yeah. Bolden. Yep. Junior, yeah, thank you. We'll I let mean, D.Y. respond. Uh, the Ryan Clark, helmet to helmet or whatever it was, huge 15-yard penalty at the time. You got, you got a guy running full speed. Anquan, Bol Anquan Bolden catches the ball, ducks his head. What do you want him to do? It's a guy running full speed. He lowers his target. Ryan Clark knows. Out of everyone that knows you know, how to hit a target, you watch him in the preseason get that ball out when he played the Ravens when he hit did his pin across the middle. He knows how to hit guys. You know, so I know he's not going to hit, you know, go for the head. And, you know, it's unfortunate, but, you know, that's the rules of the game now. But Anquan ducked when he caught the ball. So there's nothing you can do. You can hit him in his legs, but do you really want to blow a guy's knees out? You know, so you got to kind of make a business decision. And then the guy broke the tackle, and then we're still, you know, sitting here talking about it. So, you know, that's the rules the NFL came up with, so we got to live with them. They call 15 yards, and we just got to play. Uh, we will have more with Terrell Young on After the Game with Terrell Young right after this. Don't go away.
Welcome back to After the Game with Terrell Young. D.Y., I hate to break the bad news to you, but the Redskins, I just got the schedule for Thanksgiving Day. 10.30 to noon, you've got practice on Thanksgiving Day. Come on, Jay Gruden. That's fine. That's fine? That's fine. We need to, we need to practice. Uh, where will you uh, do the turkey and all that? I don't know. This will be the first year without my parents, so I don't know where I'll be going right now. Something tells me you and Niles Paul will be up to something. Absolutely. We'll be doing something. Probably burning the turkey somewhere. <laughs> uh, 15 seconds left. What are you thankful for the most? I'm thankful for all the people that are around me who helped me to get to where I am today and uh, you know who are still supportive of what I do on an everyday basis. Thank you, D.Y. Appreciate it. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Sam. Uh, best of luck Sunday at Indianapolis. Uh, I'm Alex Parker. Tonight, 9 o'clock, no sports talk tonight, bringing you the very latest on the Ferguson situation live right here on News Channel 8. Take care, folks. We'll see you soon.